welcome in. So air resistance, free fall, terminal velocity. So at some point in your foundational physics, I hope that you do run into this. When you are gonna be talking about forces in general, so most of the questions that you solve, you basically ignore air resistance. You just say that air resistance is negligible. Now, unfortunately, air resistance most of the time is not negligible. Now, for our calculations, we might do that. But in general, if you're working in real time, or in real life examples, you know, you are going to have to talk about air resistance. Now, air resistance is a particular form of friction where it is coming from the fact that you do have particles in the air and those little particles that sometimes, you know, we may see or sometimes most of the time we do not see, they're interacting with whatever object might be possibly falling down. So friction, remember, is a force which is opposing motion. And if you're falling down, well, the opposition to motion means that something is pushing you back and holding you from basically free fall. Now, what is this idea and concept of free fall? Well, free fall is the main assumption that we typically talk about, meaning we basically neglect the fact of having air resistance. So if you actually neg neglect air resistance, you are typically just thinking about yourself in falling down in a vacuum where there's no particles whatsoever. Now, near the Earth's surface, it's not really possible unless we actually conjure up that kind of idea in an experiment. But any time you think about you know, free fall, you might think about the fact that you have your gravity, which is pulling you down and you are accelerating at 9.8 meters per second squared. Now this is really fast because what it's telling us is that every single second that passes by, our speed is going to be increasing by almost 10 meters per second. That's very quick. Now, if I would take you know this random piece of paper, right? And then I would drop it, okay? So as I would kind of hold it up and then drop it down, well, you can see that, sure, it has fallen, but it sure, certainly has not fallen 10 meters every single second. And there's a reason for that, because there's air resistance, and then also the actual shape of the paper, and in fact, of every single object that we consider. So, well, first of all, scaling back a little bit, and before I jump into talking about kind of this concept of things that are falling and then incorporating air resistance into it, okay, let's talk about one item to remind ourselves of the fact that we do have gravity acting everywhere, right? So I'm going to bring in, okay, this concept of a gravitational field just to remind you that you do have gravity pulling you in. So you may recall from Newton's law of gravity. So that is the fact that if you have taken any two objects and they do carry on a mass, they have a force of attraction between them. I can put up a link up above there to that particular video if you wanted to talk about that. And what that means is no matter where we are, okay, so if this is our Earth, or in particular, any object, right, that we would have, but the Earth itself, okay, is a, a nice kind of reminder. So we know that it's some kind of a, a sphere, or at least it's very sphere-like. It's not exactly a sphere in terms of the Earth. And if we take any object near the actual Earth's surface, we know that the actual force, okay, of gravity takes on this very interesting, okay, force, which is just capital G, which is our constant, okay, um, which is our gravitational constant, okay? Any mass that we would put in, then we would have any other mass, okay, that is interacting with that. And it is being inversely proportional to the actual distance or the radius between the two objects squared. So that came from Newton's law of gravity. So that we know, but this happens to actually act in a field. Now, what do we mean by a field when we're talking about the fact of having objects okay, around? So if this was 
let's imagine that m2 is the mass of gravity so i'm going to just say that this is m2 and if we put any other object anywhere in here so it doesn't matter where it is if it was right here we know that there is okay this force of gravity that's pulling it in now if we would put the object over here we know that this would be pulling it in over here and if we have it over here then it pulls in over here and you can continue this and what it does is it creates a field a field means that anywhere around the object you would have okay this pull okay of gravity which is going to be radially radially pulling it in okay to this mass okay of earth okay as you know we're going to get pulled and sucked back into the earth and that is the force okay of the actual gravity anywhere that we would have near the earth's surface the arrows that are have actually drawn represent the field itself it just tells us the direction that the force is pulling us into so it's an attractive one into the actual earth itself so that's the direction of the field the magnitude will actually depend on where you are okay with respect to the actual distance away from the radius okay of the earth or the actual radius to the point that you are at so this would be the radius okay if you're right on the earth and this is the radius and so on so these actual fields okay that you have and these arrows that are pointing in tell you the direction the magnitude is carried out through this so that's the first thing so this field concept means that it is acting everywhere there's not a magical grab where it pulls you back in but okay that magic seems to exist where it's not an actual physical grab but there is okay an actual um, grab of gravity which is going to be pulling us back in so now how does this lead into you know air resistance and so on well what this means is that if you have any object no matter where it is okay near the earth's surface and you drop it okay along it's going to fall if you had no air resistance no matter where this would be then the actual gravity the actual pull itself would be this now the air resistance counteracts this force due to newton's third law so for every action there is a reaction and that is coming from the actual particles in the air that are just floating around okay in there you might think about why aren't they all collapsing down in because they have a certain amount Okay, of velocity and in particular once you talk about energy so they have enough energy to keep them moving around in the air they don't they just necessarily all of them fall straight back down so if we have all of these little particles in the air so how does that play a role into this air resistance again if there are no little particles at all if there is nothing resisting the fall then we call Okay, any object in free fall so it's just basically falling directly and we can calculate exactly the force that it would be so that's what we would have okay for any object in free fall that's neglecting air resistance now if you take and you consider now air resistance then this force of gravity is actually counteracted until eventually what happens is if you fall long enough and depending on the object okay its mass and the actual cross-sectional area so how it is like referring back to this paper so notice that it's a pretty big cross-sectional it's very very thin okay and it falls very very slowly now if i would take this and i would crample this up now all of a sudden clearly i haven't changed this the mass seems to be the same but if i drop it okay it falls pretty quickly because of the fact that there's not enough air resistance that is going to be holding it back okay while I, I would if i would uncrample it okay and throw it back in there's a lot of air particles that are hitting the actual surface so that all depends on the actual cross sectional okay area of that item and then the shape as well so there's many things okay that the actual air resistance will be dependent on so the actual area that it takes up the surface is one the actual dimensions k okay, of it with respect to the fact of how it is shaped okay so it's another one 
mass will certainly be playing a role as well but it is proportional to that so we have to be careful so in short okay let's take a look at this air resistance and how it actually works on an object in this gravitational field meaning anywhere you would put the object around the earth's surface the gravitational field tries to suck it back in meaning gravity itself so it doesn't matter where it is and so within here so if you would drop an object, so let's draw an object in this case, and I'll draw a square. So initially, if you would drop it down, right? So if it would have a velocity of zero, okay? There is really no air resistance at all. So now air resistance itself that you have is going to be proportional to the actual speed, okay? That this object is moving at. Now, the faster it moves, the more air particles it will hit along the way down. And that should make sense to you. If it's not moving at all, right, so then there's not much particles that can hit it, right, unless the ones that are already touching it. But as soon as you let it go, it starts to go, and it's going to be displacing all of these particles so that they start flowing out, okay, around so that it allows movement and space for this actual object to fall. But as, as they are hitting the object itself, so that hit, okay, that's a push back, and it's going to slow this object down. So initially, sure, you have a force of gravity, okay, that is acting. You have very minimal air resistance, which is the actual friction itself. So I'll put F for friction. It is opposing the motion. But as soon as the object keeps picking up, so therefore, this entirely will slowly start to change. So I'm gonna duplicate it, bring it back down. And as you're moving faster and faster, and again, depending on the object, for a piece of paper, it happens actually relatively quickly, where this particular force, okay, as you have it, and as you're moving faster and faster, this just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Until, okay, eventually, it actually will cancel off and match the force of gravity so these two will match together so the force of gravity and the force of friction okay that you have in there maybe instead of f i'll put air okay so that you know exactly what i'm referring to and if these two are matching then what you have on the object that the f net is equal to so if we assume that you know let's say up is positive so then what i'm going to have is that the force of the air minus the force of gravity eventually cancels itself off. And therefore, if it cancels itself off, the actual net force is going to be equal to zero. But what do we know when the net force is equal to zero? We know that the object might must be either at rest or it must be moving at a constant velocity. And indeed, as this object is falling, it doesn't necessarily come to rest in the air. What happens is it reaches an actual constant velocity when these two cancel each other off. And that is called terminal velocity. So whenever you hear of the word terminal velocity, what it means is it means an object falling down and eventually reaching a speed that it cannot go any faster than that. If you were in free fall, there is no such speed. The assumption is that you keep increasing because you're accelerating at approximately 9.8 meters per second squared. That is if there's no air resistance at all. But as soon as you put air resistance, those little particles are gonna be hitting the object, okay? And as you fall faster, eventually they hit fast enough until eventually they basically cancel these things, okay? So that your force of gravity on the object and the actual air resistance cancel each other off. And then you reach a terminal velocity where you're basically floating down at a constant speed. This could be really fast, okay? Or it may not be so fast, for example, like the piece of paper that I dropped because of the fact that that piece of paper very quickly reaches its terminal velocity pretty much almost instantaneously as you let it go, you notice that it's not really accelerating, it's more or less moving at a constant speed down. So this is different than, you know, for example, 
you take a piece of paper, if you take a steel ball, which is, you know, really nicely pristine, okay, in a sphere, okay, if you take any of your favorite um, uh, items from your headphones or anything like that, depending on their shape that they have, okay, they will reach a terminal velocity that will be different. You can test these things if you drop them from far enough and you do your experimentations. Eventually, you can actually do that and check what happens. So that's what I wanted to be able to show you. Now, one neat thing that can happen is that the actual air resistance can overtake the force of gravity, which is initially that you have in there, and it can slow things down. Can you think of an example where that happens? Okay, I'll give you a hint. Okay, how about if you have a person jumping off and then eventually, okay, pressing the button so that their parachute starts to open up and what you notice that when the parachute opens up then there is now from that parachute okay that you're carrying down because it's relatively huge so that particular parachute now you have a lot of air particles which start to hit this down and they actually slow down okay that particular individual okay as they're parachuting down and so this particular person as they're coming down all of a sudden gets slowed down because the force of the air now is actually much bigger so for what happens is that your force of air will overtake this and you will actually slow down okay and decelerate quite a bit but then eventually what happens after a little bit of time okay this actual force that you are carrying out so this one the force of air slowly matches up again and then you you reach a new terminal velocity which is going to be even slower than the one that you originally had that's the goal of the parachutes that we're carrying so we're really utilizing physics to be able so that we can land comfortably because we obviously don't want to be going too fast when we're hitting the ground because we're going to cause all kinds of injuries so there you have it so hopefully in this video now you understand the concept of a gravitational field, meaning that your gravity, anywhere you drop an object around the Earth itself, okay, that gravity is pulling it in. That field is typically designated with arrows so that we can physically imagine, again, those are like vectors that are pulling it back in, and it can be calculated based on Newton's law of gravity. And when you let go of an object, if it's in free fall, and it's basically going to be accelerating at 9.8 meters per second squared. If you throw in air resistance, that's not going to happen because now you're going to have friction from that air resistance, you know, basically going against the motion until eventually you reach something called terminal velocity. And that terminal velocity will be different for every object because it is dependent on its actual shape and then the cross-sectional area that it has. All right. Thanks for watching. See you in a future video. Bye, everybody.